This is KNEB.TV Ag News. From the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Ag Desk, Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. For this week's In the Field Update, we're near Firth, Nebraska, checking in on silage chopping. Levi Oldie from Oldie Family Farms is joining us. You guys operate Prairie Land Dairy up here in this area, operate uh, dairies in Kansas as well. Tell me a bit about the operation and how silage chopping is going this year. Yep, so we, uh, myself, my dad, and my two older brothers uh, kind of own and operate Oldie Family Farms. We have uh, two dairies in Kansas and Prairie Land Dairy here in Firth. Uh, we have a heifer yard. So along with all that, we do all of our, we farm, uh, that'd be foremost farms, part of the operation. We do all of our all of our farming, uh, chopping, and, and manure spreading. So um, obviously we're up here today chopping some feed for cows. Yep. So when did you start chopping? I assume you started in Kansas this year and worked your way north. Yes, we started, uh, we've probably been going almost three weeks now. We are spent a couple weeks in Kansas. We are got up here Sunday and hoping to be done possibly Saturday, but probably Sunday. A little rain uh, you encountered, but in general crop conditions in southeast Nebraska, at least where we're standing here again near Firth, things are a little dry in places. As you get into the field, what are you seeing from the cab? Um, well, things are... The ground's dry, which being uh, running the chopper and trucks is, is is nice for getting around and, and getting things done. But um, we've been on mostly irrigated stuff and it all looks, has been really good. Probably probably the best feed we've seen since we've been up here in 2019 is when we started chopping, uh, managing prairie land. So things are looking good. You're running two choppers uh, on this field, this irrigated field, as you know, visiting here today, Levi. How many semis do you have to run to keep up with uh, those choppers? We have four four semis and trailers. Okay. Uh, uh, four per cutter, and there's eight eight total. So, like a big pile of feed, that's for sure. Yep, yep. But when it comes to uh, chopping perfect silage, what's kind of the, the science behind it? What are you looking for when you get into the fields? Uh, ideally, um, anymore, we would kind of like our silage, whole plant moisture from. 60 around 65 63 to 68 um that's kind of the number one after that kind of looking at well you want you want yield you want a lot of grain that's the biggest thing after that you're looking at starch you would want plenty of starch for for the for the cows to make milk and then probably digestibility after that for somebody who's not been inside the cab of a silage chopper what kind of technology is in there um so these are equipped with um GPS, uh, row sense, uh, header height. We also also are running machine sync, and uh, so both our cutters are talking to each other and sharing lines, guidance lines, and sharing um, yield data uh, with each other and mapping coverage. We had running three weeks at this point. What do you do to keep yourself uh, occupied and I suppose focused in there as the days get long? Um, you know it's. You stay, uh, you stay busy enough. It's I don't know, the days go by pretty fast. Really, it's it's uh, you're always paying attention to the trucks and the train and trying to keep from uh, hitting anything. It, it it keeps the guy busy in there. Is it tough to find a good labor force to stay with you through the through the whole silage shopping season? Um, we've been pretty fortunate. We turned to the H two A program mm -hmm. for for a lot of our farm help. It's it's kind of a struggle to find local help, mm -hmm. and so. That, that's kind of the route we've had to go. 